Hello there guys, Aaron Charter here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers fan channel. We are here for the match preview. It's Sunderland at the Stadium of Light on Saturday. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another YouTube video. Also, check the description down below because we did a preview. I was invited to do a preview on the red and white uh, preview on the podcast, uh, for Red and White podcast, with Jack, who runs it, who's also part of Sunderland Fan TV now. And also, uh, an ex-Sunderland player called Kieran Brady. He's, uh, he's an ex-Sunderland player um, from the 80s and 90s. He had a four-week loan spell at Doncaster back in 1992. And you know what? He's, he's, he's a great guy, wonderful guy. Um, lovely to chat to him and also Jack, who we did the preview with him in the reverse fixture. Um, you know, earlier on in the season. So make sure you go check the video out with Jack and Kieran. Uh, links in the description down below. Go and support their channel. Really means a lot to me if you support them because seeing other people happy makes me just as happy. Uh, but let's get straight into this then. Obviously, you can see the team behind me, uh, my predicted team, uh, and the team that I want to see. It's a mixture of what I want to see and also what I think we could see. Um, but let's talk about Sunderland first of all. Obviously, not on the best run of form. Came off a 2 1 defeat to, to Shrewsbury away uh, uh, the previous on the Tuesday. Day uh, when we lost to Fleetwood, and you know this is the kind of result that Andy Butler said he wants. You know this team, you know maybe the spank up the backside is what we needed to get on to get back on a winning front form. And you got to think we won like four or five on the bounce, and then we got the defeat against Fleetwood. So you know we are looking here at. I mean overall we've taken thirty points, and it's, it's something like thirty points from the last thirty six available including both defeats to Shrewsbury and Fleetwood. That's actually really impressive. That's still really impressive. I look at the Fleetwood defeat as, you know what, we've rode our luck for the past couple of games, the luck ran out, and we now need to recuperate that, and it's up to us mentally to see how we get back on form with that. And it's up to us really to to do that and to, to show what who we are as a club, really. Um... And, you know, it's up to us and our title charge to make up for the mistake mistakes against Fleetwood. And that's what's made my judgment in the team as well. Uh, obviously, Aidan O'Brien's going to be a big threat for Sunderland. Charlie White's going to be a big test for Ellery Balcom. Um, and it's going to be interesting. You know, we've got to think before the Shrewsbury game, they um, fought out a competitive 2-2 draw against uh, MK Dons, I think it was. So... You know, Sunderland are there for the taking, but they're also a dangerous, dangerous threat. So they can win at any, they can get a victory at any time. And, you know, I see Sunderland fans on social media, you know, should they get Lee Johnson out of the club? It's far too early for that, in my opinion. If I'm looking at it from an outside opinion to the opponent's view, it's too early, in my opinion, for Lee Johnson to be sacked. I think that, uh, you know, he needs the backing from this, uh, you know, if, if there's going to be a new owner coming in uh, very, very soon to Sunderland, then they're going to need the owners to back Lee Johnson in the summer, especially. So, you know, and, but to be fair, I think Stuart Donald's still got shares in the club when the new owner comes in, which I'm hoping they get eliminated in very, very soon. Uh, because I think if Sunderland want to move forward, then Stuart Donald needs to be completely gone from Sunderland. He's just he's just clutching at straws now. And, you know, Sunderland on the pitch is going to be tough. You know, they might not be in the best run of form at the minute, but it is going to be tough. Um, especially if we want to get back on form and get on another 5-6 game winning run. Um, so let's go into the team lineup, and this is what this again, like I said, this is a mixture of what I want to see and also what I think we could see. So there's going to be players in there that might not happen on the pitch in that particular position, but it's what I want to see as well. Uh, so in goal, Elry Balcom, no surprises there. Uh, yes, he made a little bit of a howl for the second goal, but you know what? He's still our number one keeper. He's, he's dug us out of a hole so many times in the past few games, and um, you know I, I want to see him start. Uh, in the back four, Halliday at right back, uh, Butler as captain, of course, partnering Joe Wright, and Reese James at left back. John needs to be benched, in my personal opinion. He needs to be benched. He needs to be benched because, in my opinion, yes, he's good going forward and he might stick to his position quite well, but when he gets caught out of position, he has to jog back and maybe lose his man like he did against Danassi and against in, in the Fleetwood match and he gets caught out of position a lot and gives the ball away a lot, 
He is not a left back, and many fans would argue that, it, it, and many fans would agree with that. He's not a left back. We need to start playing him as a centre back more, as well as you know, if you're going to play him at left back, feel free, but play him as a centre back as well. Don't just play him as an out and out left back because he's not an out and out left back. He's a centre back as well. So if I was Darren Moore, if I wasn't starting Joe Wright, because obviously Anderson's out of this game and possibly the Accrington one as well. I'd be giving an opportunity for Cameron John as a centre-back in his actual natural position. And I'd be giving Reese James a chance back in his normal position as well. Because, you know, Butler's going to lead that team. No no denying that. Whatever the result, Butler will lead that team and will give him a nice kick up the backside. But Cameron John as a centre-back would be great. And, you know, there's a bit of a 50-50 discussion as to whether it should be Butler and Wright or Butler and John. Because if you think about it, our defence, Butler and Anderson, have been two brick walls. Two deep centre-backs. Not real pace, just defensive strength. And if you put pace into that defence, it could leave gaps. So that's the argument for having Butler and Wright. On the other side of that, as a Butler-John partnership, you have the brick wall in Butler and the pace and power of, of John as a centre-back rather than a left-back. So that's the argument for that partnership because you have a mixture of defen defensive strength and defensive pace, which is something that keeps the defence deep but also playing a high line during an attack but able to get back during uh, counter-attacks from the opposition. So it's, it's been a bit of 50-50, but I want to give John a break. I want to give John a break on the bench, give him a rest because uh, he was making a few mistakes in that Fleetwood game. So give him a rest, put Joe Wright at centre-back, because as soon as he came on for Anderson in the 13th minute, he was making blocks left, right and centre a couple of times. So, you know, Wright and Butler, this is Wright's chance now to earn that regular first-team start again. So, you know, this is an opportunity here. Um, then in the centre of midfield, we're going back to the 4-2-3-1. I do not want to see a 4-3-3 with a holding midfielder and a CDM behind them. No way. Uh, back to the 4-2-3-1, so two holding midfielders and a cam. Uh, the two holding midfielders, John Bostock for his second start of the season, and Matt Smith. Bostock as the holding, experienced veteran midfielder. Smith as the exciting young playmaker next to him. A good mix, collage of styles. Richards has to, uh, has to start. Richards at cam needs to start. 110%. If we want to break Sunderland down, Richards is our best chance of breaking that down. He needs to start. Then on the wings, we've got Taylor on the right, Okunabiri on the left, and Bogle up front. Now, the reason why I've gone with that is because Taylor on the right has done a good job. Obviously, Sims is going to start coming back into the squad in a few weeks. So, you know, Sims is going to gradually come into this first team. So, Taylor needs to start... Keep putting in performances to make us think it shouldn't be him that should be benched. It should be Okunabiri and Simeos and people like that. And the reason why I put Okunabiri on the left wing is because when Bogle came on, Okunabiri looked better, in my opinion. He looked better. And Bogle had a good couple of chances he could have scored as well. So Bogle's got that attacking threat about him. And if you put Okunabiri on the left wing and Bogle up front as a solo striker... That partnership already works, and you can have take. It's that it's that English front three, isn't it? The wingers are English, and the front striker is English. It's that English three partnership, that triangular partnership, that English connection. So it's gonna work. It's, you get crosses in, and it's gonna work. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it works. But I want to see Bogle up front, and I want to see Okunabiri on that left wing. I do not want to see Okunabiri up front. Because um, when Bogle came on, he did not look like he was injured or at least under 100%. I think he looked really good. So we play him up front. We play Okunabir on the left, Taylor on the right. Perfect. And then on the bench, uh, Jones, John, Greaves, Gomez, Robertson, Simeos and Lakilo. Obviously, Anderson's missing for this game and Coppinger still isn't back yet. Um... And obviously, I, I can't argue with that bench. John needs a break. Jones on the bench anyway. Lakilo needs to be on the bench. I think the second half he was quite distant. So uh, you know, in the in the Fleetwood game, so I think Lakilo needs a break as well. Simeos obviously hasn't got a place on on the starting lineup. Robertson needs to come off the bench as well. And uh, Greaves obviously is a bench player as well. And Gomez, I'm sorry after that second goal and that part and that performance when he came on in the second half, Gomez needs to be benched and then maybe for the last five minutes take if you want to substitute richards off and put gomez at cam do that because when he's at cam he presses all over he's playing that role well as soon as you put him into the holding midfield or somewhere not at cam he turns into complete and utter dog rubbish so what you need 
is you need Maja Gomez in his natural position, in my opinion, which is the cam position. So, overall then, I'm very happy with that predicted team. I, I mean, comment down below if you think you're making any changes. Um, finally then, score prediction. Now, I said this on the Red and White preview show with Kieran, Brady, and with Jack. Um, I'm going to go with a 2-0 win. I think I said Okanabiri and Richards to score, or Bogle and Richards to score, something like that. Um, and I think I'll probably go with that, you know. I think Omar Bogle might start his account. And I think Taylor Rich will get a nice 20 yarder or an 18 yarder or something like that uh, that he usually gets. So, um, you know, I think that's what we're looking at here. Maybe it could be three. Maybe if we break them down even more, it could be three, especially if Gomez comes on. Maybe he could score a goal and get his account up and going, get that confidence back. And uh, that's the main reason for me why Gomez is on the bench, because he could come off into that camp position to substitute Richards if, if need be, because he always substitutes Richards pretty much. So we're expecting Richards to probably go off in the second half with about half an hour, 25 minutes to go. So um, between 35 minutes and 25 minutes to go. And Gomez in that camp position could press all around, get the ball off, make through passes, and that is what he's better at. He's better in that camp position. So... Um, and maybe he could get a third goal. It could be two or three nil, but I'm going to stick with the two nil. Um, but I think the f I think we'll do the job. I think we'll do the job in both halves. I think that Sunderland might fall under the pressure. So um, this is our perfect game to bounce back and uh, let's get back on that title run, especially with uh, Hull coming up next uh, the following week after Accrington. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Aaron Chandler from Forever Football D R S C. Keep living the Rovers life. And for now, guys, that is full time. Rovers slide die. Come on, Rovers. Let's bounce back. Rovers,